If you clicked on this video, maybe you've been wanting to get into classics for a long time now, but you just don't know how. And I get it, I've been studying and teaching classical literature for a long time now, and classics can be intimidating, but don't worry because they don't have to be. I've curated a selection of 10 books, 10 of the best classics out there that are actually quite easy to begin with. There's something for everyone. And even if you are an experienced classical reader, then some of these selections might still surprise you. I have even linked all of the books I talk about down below in the description box for your easy reference. Let's start your classical journey. And we start off with a contemporary classic. Perfume by Patrick Suskind is an exceptional thriller. It is the story of Jean-Baptiste Grenouille, who is an orphan, who is born as an orphan in 18th century France. Now what makes our orphan special is that he has an exceptional sense of smell. He's able to identify and recognize a whole range of smells, which makes him an, actually an excellent perfumer. But come the day that he meets a girl with this wondrous natural scent and things go wrong. This is a book for people who like thrillers, for people who like historical fiction. And yes, this is also a book for people who like some spice in their books. Because if you ever wanted your spice to be a little more poetical, a little more literate, then this is the book for you. It has some excellent language. It is a page turner and the whole idea of exploring the world around you just by sense and actually describing it in a book it is unseen, it is masterful. It is a contemporary classic, so the language is very, very easy and accessible to read. If you're looking for something different and you have no problem at all with it being a bit darker, then Perfume by Suskind is the book for you. And we're staying in murder territory with our second book. And we have to talk about Agatha Christie. There are many great Agatha Christie books to start with. I've even made a video for it, so if you want to know more, I'll link it somewhere up there. For now, for this list, I would go with And Then There Were None. Ten people on a remote island, ten strangers, and one of them gets murdered. And all of a sudden, they have to continue, knowing that one of them is a murderer. And this book is Agatha Christie at her best. It feels dark and claustrophobic and original. And it is no wonder that it was this book, and then there were none, that was voted amongst Agatha Christie fans as to be her best book ever. If you like a good murder mystery, if you like series or films like the Knives Out series, or if you're just looking for an excellent page turner, then this is the book for you. Just be warned, this is the kind of book that has you saying just one more chapter and then turn up very, very tired at work or school the next morning. And then there were none by Agatha Christie. Cottagecore people, unite, because this book is for you. Anne of Green Gables is a well-loved classic. It is the heartwarming story of a farm called Green Gables in the fictional town of Avonlea. The elderly pair of brother and sister that run the farm actually want to adopt a boy. And they are not ready for the feisty, headstrong, red-headed girl they are going to get. Anne of Green Gables, which was turned into a very popular Netflix series, is a wonderful timepiece. It is a book about a family, about a spot, about a time in history. But it is also a book about love, vulnerability, about growing up. This is a book for the romance readers, for those who love a good YA and a good coming of age story. It is a book for those that love historical fiction. But perhaps most of all, this is a book for anyone who's looking for a cozy read. Maybe you've seen the series, maybe you've heard of the book, but by all means, do give Anne of Green Gables a chance and I promise you, you'll come to love it. And on that same note, I simply have to pitch Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Many generations of readers, being female, being male, being young, being old, they have all fallen in love with the March sisters. When Louisa May Alcott was asked by her publishers to write a girly book, she kind of refused. And she disguised it as Little Women. It is a book about war, it is a book about death, it is a book about love, it is a book about personal ambitions, it is a lot. And it is certainly not girly. It is a story of four sisters. Now these are four very 
different characters, but they are united in their devotion to one another. Because they will need each other to survive struggle, civil war, famine, poverty, you name it. But despite all of these hardships, there is a love. There is a love between those sisters that simply can't be broken. This is a book for people who like historical fiction. This is a book for people who like the Gilmore Girls. This is possibly even the best Christmas book out there. And this is most certainly a book for those who love to fall in love with characters and become totally obsessed with them. It is one of my all-time personal favorites. It is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. If you're finding this video helpful so far, then do hit that like button and do leave any questions you might have down below in the comments so I can help you with some more personally tailored recommendations just for you. The next book is quite different. The next book you absolutely have heard of. And the next book might have been the result of a bet amongst friends to see who could write the best horror story. Yes, I am talking about the gothic masterpiece Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus by Mary Shelley. Oh, this book, this book is quite something. Yes, you could call it a horror story. Yes, you could call it a science fiction story. Whatever you call it, just make sure you add gothic to it because this book is one of the darker kinds. This is not just a book about a scientist and the monster he creates. No, this is a book about the human mind, about fear, about ambition, about wanting to be bigger than you can actually be. It explores anxiety, regret, fear even, but also hope and ambition and love. This book is one of the most influential books of all times. It has shaped television, it has shaped movies, it has shaped books we still read today. Yes, you could go with the original 1818 text, but you can also go with one of the more modern translations to make the language more accessible. If you like it a bit darker, a bit moodier and a bit more visceral, then this book is for you. This is a book to be read when the rain is gushing down outside and there is a candle flickering somewhere in the room. This isn't just a book, it is an experience. Because Mary Shelley's Frankenstein will change the way you look at books forever. Now you might not know this next book, but I bet you have heard of one of this author's bestsellers. Of course you know Norwegian author Jostein Garder from his best-selling book Sophie's World. But I don't think that Sophie's World is a good place to start. Instead, I would recommend The Solitaire Mystery. This solitaire mystery is the story of a young boy, Hans. Now Hans and his father are going to undertake a marvelous journey. They're going to drive from Norway all the way down south to Greece in a quest to find Hans' mother, a woman who left them many years ago. Now while on this journey Hans is reading a book, a marvelous fantastical book, a memoir of an old sailor who shipwrecks on a mysterious island where a deck of playing cards comes to life. And as their journey continues, both of the stories start to mingle. In fact, by the end of the book, spoiler alert, you might realize that there is a third story. Your story and your quest about understanding life in general. This book is for the fans of YA. This book is for fans of philosophy. This book is for fans of books that make you think. But it is also a heartwarming, endearing story about the love between a father and his 12-year-old son. Be warned though, if you read The Solitaire Mystery, you might never look at a deck of playing cards in the same way. The Solitaire Mystery by Jostein Gardner. And then we have to talk about possibly my own favorite modern classic of all times. You know this one, it is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. We are teleported to the Jazz Age. Gin is America's number one national drink and sex has become its national obsession. The Great Gatsby has it all. Decadence, scandal, social upheaval and even class struggles. It is a cautionary tale against the American dream. But The Great Gatsby also has some of the best fictional characters ever. Because on the one hand, Fitzgerald is a master in using all of the tropes and using them over the top. But on the other hand, he takes these cliches, these over the top archetypes of characters and gives them depth. 
He gives them feelings, thoughts, ambitions and fears, and he breathes life into them. If you like the jazz age, if you like drama, if you like romance, if you like a good critique of society, and if you like books like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, then this is the book for you. A quick, scandalous read. It is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And then let's tackle some fantasy. Let's talk about The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Now The Hobbit is not only one of the earlier books in the whole timeline, it is also an excellent place to wet your feet and get to know what Tolkien is all about. This is the tale of Bilbo Baggins, a cozy homebody hobbit who lives in the Shire and actually wants to be left alone. Until the day that he is swept on an adventure by some strange wizard and a whole plethora of dwarfs onto an expedition to the lonely mountain where there is a dragon that guards an ancient fortress. And yes, I would absolutely recommend to read The Hobbit first if you're new to Tolkien. Why The Hobbit has a far more lighter tone and is almost seen as a children's book, Lord of the Rings is much more darker and more literate. The Hobbit is far shorter and a far easier read than The Lord of the Rings. It introduces the world, it introduces the setting and prepares you to read the trilogy afterwards if you still like it. The Hobbit is a book for anyone who loves fairy tales, adventure and fantastical stories. It is a book that is both funny and emotional. It is an epic journey and a great introduction to the world of Middle Earth. It is one of the foundations of modern fantasy and it will give you a new, fresh look on anything fantasy or fantasy related. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. And then let's do some romance. And yes, I know you've been waiting for Jane Austen. Now I know. I know that you expect me to go with Pride and Prejudice. But in all honesty, I don't think that is the right place to start if you're new to Jane Austen or these kind of books. Instead, I am going to pitch Emma to you. And I will say, and this might be an unpopular opinion, but I think that Emma is Jane Austen's best book. Because Emma is a whole different kind of romance heroine. She's beautiful, vain, headstrong, irresistibly witty and oblivious to the results of her actions. Yes, Emma is a romance novel, but it is also a comedy of manners. It is a story of the families who live in this fictional village of Highbury and the surrounding estates. We meet Emma Woodhouse and she has it all. The only thing she does not possess is the insight that her matchmaking skills are dreadful. She has nothing else to do, so she decides to meddle in the lives of others with some disastrous consequences. And this book was quite refreshing and quite new to the era. In fact, before she began to write a novel, Jane Austen reputedly has said, I'm going to take a heroine that no one else but me will like. But she was wrong because I love Emma. Yes, this is one for the romance lovers, but also for the people who are sick and tired of seeing the same old romance tropes over and over again. It is for fans of TV series like Bridgerton or films like Enola Holmes. This is the book for people who are Jane Austen curious but are wary of those ever so sickeningly sweet romances that you might associate her with. Emma by Jane Austen, a hidden gem. And then we have I Captured the Castle by Dodie Smith. Now you might not know the name of Dodie Smith, who was an author and a playwright who fled from the UK all the way up to America because she didn't want to get involved in the war, but you definitely know one of her most famous children's books, and that's The 101 Dalmatians. And this book, however, is something entirely different. This is the tale of the eccentric Mortmain family. Now the father, who is an aspiring author has taken this lease on a castle where he hopes to find the calm and the inspiration for a next or first best-selling book. And he takes his family with him. He takes his family with him to this decaying castle where they have to live in poverty actually and try to survive. It is the teenage daughter Cassandra Mortmain, who is actually a better reporter and writer than her father, who tells the whole story about their stay in this strange decaying castle. During her stay she keeps a journal which is filled to the brim with funny anecdotes, witty observations and some very 
very clever storytelling. She tells about her castle, about her family, about being poor and yes, about what it is to grow up and go from a young teenager girl to a young woman. This book has one of the best beginnings and one of the most epic endings of all books. If you like a good coming of age story, if you like eccentric families and inspiring characters, if you like a good YA, if you are a young woman or a man for that matter who is in their early 20s and looking for their place in the world, then this is the book for you. I Captured the Castle by Doddy Smith, this is how you do YA. There are many excellent classics that you shouldn't be intimidated about. This selection only holds 10 and I hope I helped you on the way with them. Now if you're still a bit on the fence about why and how to read classics, then don't worry. Just watch this next video and I'll help you out some more. Thank you for watching and goodbye.